equities are mostly higher this morning, other than the NASDAQ. As I speak to you right now, the NASDAQ is down four tenths of a percent, but the S&P is up two tenths, the Dow is up almost eight tenths, and the Russell is up almost a full percent. Yields are mildly lower across the board between four basis points and six basis points to the downside, and the twos tens inversion is unchanged at negative 93. Retail sales were mixed with the headline lower than expected, but not negative. Consumers were still net spending in June, but less because May's numbers were revised higher, hence the mixed tone that I'm talking about. Now, bank earnings this morning were strong, but a great deal of it came from net interest income, which you would expect in a Fed tightening cycle, and also from credit cards, which is not necessarily the perfect situation, but certainly not a negative for the financial sector. We will see more as regional banks start to report. That'll be important. Copper's lower again, but crude, natural gas, gold, and silver are all higher. The euro currency spiked this morning to the highest level seen since last February, but then pulled back to negative on the day so far in the early going. If the euro were to recover and finish higher on the day, it would be up against the dollar in eight of the last nine sessions in the futures market, but nine straight in the cash, which would be the longest streak since 2004. We also want to watch geopolitics over the next couple of days as the U.S. is discussing limiting investments in Chinese technology. And Russia has pulled out of the Black Sea Agreement, which assures the safety of food traveling to and from Ukraine, which could also cause some stress in the agricultural futures market. So keep an eye on that. Now, looking ahead, later today, we get words from Fed Vice Chair for Supervision, Michael Barr, as well as Michael Gibson, who's also in that supervisory arm of the Fed. They are not restrained from talking during the Fed's quiet period because they are not part of the Federal Open Markets Committee, but commentary on supervision could move markets. They're not likely to, to discuss interest rates. Earnings today after market close, we get nine companies with market caps over a billion, including Interactive Brokers, J.B. Hunt, and Western Alliance, Alliance Bank, which was a focus of a lot of investors during that sort short stress period in the regional banking sector. Then tomorrow before the open, we get ASML, which is a semiconductor company, Elevance Health, Baker Hughes, and then a bunch of regionals like U.S. Bank Corp, M&T Bank, Citizens Financial, First Horizon, and Commerce Bank shares. In terms of data tomorrow, we get inflation data in the U.K. and the E.U., housing starts, and then building permits in the U.S. 